Thank you, Rings. First of all, welcome to London, welcome to England. Um, first of all, how did this come about and how did you first become aware of Brentford's interest in it? Um, they called me on uh, the night of the uh, trip, uh, just uh, before. And, uh, they told me about stories. Uh, they have uh, uh, all of co coming days, and I was uh, one. Uh, if I uh, was interested in the, in the job, uh, I was interested because uh, I was already uh, following the story about uh, Michelin, about uh, Les Blancs, I was reading his book. Uh, I, I, I've been here once, my father and my, my brother. On, uh, on March 2014 uh, against uh, Kofi City. We liked uh, the game very much. Uh, so, uh, yeah, and they also play good football. I, I saw on, uh, on March 2014. So, I think uh, I said, yeah, I want to uh, go in the next round. And uh, yes, and the next week I was uh, first day here. Uh, I played for myself uh, on Friday against Cambio. And the next day uh, I was here. I talk about it with, uh, with Rasmus, with Phil Gills. I watch the game and uh, I go home again, so uh, that's the thing. What excites you about this? I mean, you you followed the story, but when you came here and spoke to them, what really attracted you? I, did, I think they have a, a clear vision about uh, football, a little bit a, a new one. Uh, and, uh, uh, very, uh, not always uh, emo emo emotional, but always a rational uh, uh, thinking. I think that's, that's the, uh, the right way, and they want to uh, get uh, uh, better as a club, and uh, the players want to get better with, with inno innovation. Uh, uh, and I am uh, a coach, uh, also I want to develop myself, and uh, I'm open minded and a team player. So uh, when we talk uh, a couple of days, I've been here for four days, and uh, uh, we get uh, a very good fit together, I think. They had a very successful manager before you, and he was popular with the players and popular with the fans. Is he a difficult act to follow? Do you feel you're going to have to perhaps win people over? Uh, no, I, I don't uh, think like that. I think it's good basic for me uh, to, uh, to build up and uh, play already good football. If they were not playing good football and uh, fit in the league, and it's the most difficult uh, to start. Now it's good basic uh, to play. Uh, he's done a great job over here a couple of years. So, uh, with all respect, and now uh, I hope uh, we can build on uh, the base. What have they told you in terms of your expectations? You said they've, they've got a good foundation here. Are you expecting to take them on to the next level, maybe win promotion next season? Yeah, I think the, the first important is to uh, uh, make things better. Uh, uh, they want to be an innovation uh, club, uh, policy. Uh, that's important, is we bring young players in. Uh, we have to uh, get, get them better, develop them themselves as a team, they develop themselves, and put me as a coach, uh, as a team. and if they uh, will be, uh, yeah, we'll see you if good enough uh, for what's the position on, on, on the league. It, for me, it's now difficult to say. The previous manager left Fun because he didn't sort of share the vision of the club, had a, a management structure. Is that something you're very, very comfortable with? Yes, of course. We, we talk a lot about it and it made the uh, story interesting uh, also for me because uh, I think uh, part of the modern football uh, uh, used uh, all kinds of stuff to, to get better and I do it for myself, to get feedback for myself. Yes, I, I think it's good stuff, so uh, for me it's good. So uh, yes, I'm, I'm fully uh, uh, behind that uh, policy. And in terms, you said you want to bring in new players and then develop the squad and so on. How much input will you have in that, or will it be left to, to the other guys to bring in the players that you then get out of the training pitch? That's very clear for me. Um, we talk about it, of course. Um, I'm in the peering process. Uh, I watch the team and uh, uh, I have my opinion of what, what we need. And then uh, the process is uh, for, the, for, the, for the sport directors. And finally, we discuss uh, the, the options uh, which are there, so we do like the team, uh, uh, the training, but also uh, the, the recruitment. And who will have final say? If you say, I need a central midfielder, you'll discuss players, who will have final say about who you will go for? I think we decide with the team, so uh, we discuss about it, and finally uh, you will see uh, it's, it's open, uh, uh, the way uh, they talk with me. Uh, I, I think we, 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 we leave the club uh, by this way uh, this, this season, so it will be okay, I think. Have you already identified any players that you'd like to bring in? 
But no, I'm just looking now for the, for the own players. Uh, I, I think there's a lot of quality players like Tarowski, uh, Gray, uh, Jutta, uh, good, good coaching for Button. So uh, uh, you see, uh, there's always when they come with a new coach, there's always uh, a chance for everybody. Especially uh, with me, I'm open-minded, uh, everybody gets a chance. Uh, I've seen two games, so uh, I've, uh, I've no... Uh, about everyone that, that they can come, come in uh, on the 1st of the, July and they have all a chance because uh, my is the best player play if you are 18 or 30 it doesn't matter uh, the best player play so I think it's just uh, a good start for everybody. And you mentioned Andre Gray in that list of players there do you expect him to still be at the club he's already been linked and he's been very successful at the time he's been here in terms of scoring goals do you expect to still have him here at the start of next season? Yes I hope so. Yes, he's a good season. Uh, it's important that's good, good uh, goal striker, so I hope he's in. No, it's a strange first question, but just like so make sure I pronounce it right in season. How do you say your name? Uh, I really bought you. It's a little bit difficult about my name. Yes, in the Netherlands it's Marinus Dijkhuizen. I don't know, my English is not so, so good. Uh, I have to read my English, but maybe you can try it. We should pronounce it your way, I think. But I'm not going to try it right now. Okay, that's okay. <laughs> How much did you know about Brentford before you were offered the job? Have you been following their, their recent success? Uh, yes, a little bit, because I, I was here, I, I mentioned uh, in, in March, so uh, there was a, a League One, and I was surprised by the level of, of the play. So then you, you follow, and she said, they go up. And, uh, uh, otherwise, you are, uh, I must say, it's also with your uh, full attention at, at your own team. So uh, when they start uh, going, then you get the information about the club and you talk about the club. But yeah, that's, that's now difficult. Uh, uh, I have to get used to the, to the championship level. I don't know yet what, what, what that is. That's a bit di big difference, but yes. When I hear yeah, the uh, prison start, it will be okay in a couple of games. You don't know the exact level yet, but what do you think about championship level? Is that the same as the the top flight in the Netherlands? Uh, I don't know the top top three, but uh, I'm a Venice. Well, the top the top division. The top is as strong as the top division. Yes, I think so. It's, it's, it's very hard to uh, lead with a lot, a lot of games, uh, big clubs. Uh, so I think uh, maybe it's harder to play in the championship than in, in, uh, in the Eredivisie. division. I think so. And Mark Warburton is going to be a tough act to follow. Yeah. So close to promotion. Is promotion to the Premier League yes. in your first season your target? Um, uh, I, I can say uh, before uh, we, we start the season, we want to, to get uh, as a club better, as a team better, as an individual better. Then uh, is, is take the, uh, which place that belongs. It's hard to say for me because I I don't know the, the strength of the of, of my own team, but also not the, the, the other teams. It's hard to say now. On, too difficult. What would you aim for this season? What would be a, a successful season for you? Uh, when uh, uh, you play good football, uh, I prefer attacking football. I think, I hope you are one of the best sides. I, I think you can uh, press forwards, uh, uh, but play a good position in good play. So that's why I, I'm glad it's already good basic for for playing football. This, uh, I think that's important to, uh, for, for the spectators to see, see good football. But otherwise, you have to be a little bit realistic and, and have to be uh, getting results. That's amazing. And that most important, I think, the combination is, uh, is very good, I think. The previous manager left because he felt, in part, because he felt that the balance towards the statistical approach <coughs> had gone too far. You clearly buy into the, the new system, mm -hmm. but do you have to be careful? Because obviously football players are human beings after all. Yeah, I'm, I'm not afraid of that. It's, I'm, I'm not thinking in, uh, in, in, in treatment, but in, in chances. I think it's a big chance if you get all other stuff uh, with you. And finally, it's, 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 uh, it's about football and I make decisions about the tactic, about the player who's playing, because I, I play every, uh, of our train every day with them. But I think it's a, it's a big chance uh, with, with, with all the uh, information in the club is to get better uh, as a club and as, as a team. Aside from football, what are you most looking forward to about your new life here in London? Uh, 
I, I think the, the main part is football because it's a big job, uh, a lot of work. That's nice because uh, uh, I see it now not as a work because it's, uh, football is a, is a hobby for me. So uh, I, I love football. So I, I'm very excited about uh, playing games in this big, big championship. And, yeah, and maybe it's uh, some hours to, to spend uh, the nice uh, city in London. That's, that's not important in the first, first step. Thank you. Are we putting questions to Rasmus? Yeah, we're welcome to. Yeah. Rasmus, we, we, we've read a lot about this new statistical approach. I mean, obviously a lot of football clubs do that nowadays. Are you doing anything beyond the norm? Anything extra special that we haven't seen in English football already? Yeah, I think stats and numbers have been in football for a long time. That's not uh, breaking news. Um, for us, it's not really about the stats. It's about what you do with the stats. And uh, we have uh, some ideas on, on that, that that we think can uh, can make a difference. So, so yeah, I hope we're doing something different. I read that at the club in Denmark. Again, I'm not going to try and pronounce. Um, you text the coach key performance indicators before the half-time team talk so that he can better structure his, his team talk. Is that something you're going to do here? Yeah, maybe. I mean, um, uh, when you're a coach and um, um, you are in the game, uh, after the first half you probably have an uh, emotional or, uh, or your own analytical understanding of how you performed in the first half. And uh, we think it's important that you have an objective uh, analysis as well to, to, to measure that feeling against. So it's not that the intuition that a coach has may be wrong, but it's just to give him a different perspective. And uh, I guess uh, that's how we want to work in Brentford as well. When, when, when we talk about statistics, it's often being a bit misunderstood, like we're taking this to a, a, an extreme, but it's not that we, we don't think that the intuition and gut feeling uh, don't have a role to play anymore. We think, but it's, it's just have to be in the right in the right balance. Are you going to move the, the model that you use in Denmark as an exact fit for, for Brentford, or are there going to be some tweaks, some differences? I think in general we like to uh, share knowledge between the clubs. We like to share best practice. We like to share. We already uh, share uh, recruitment philosophy, um, and there will be hopefully more and more of that uh, coming. So so a football club is a football club. So I think there's a lot, no matter if you're a football club in Denmark or England, I think uh, the, the way you run the club has to be very similar. And we do see in English football a bit of a higher and fire and culture, but I also read that uh, the, the managers, the head coaches who work alongside you or under you, aren't going to get sacked because of a poor run of results. Is, is that definitely going to be the case? I mean, if, if things don't go, go right here, say Brentford don't win in the first 10 games next season, does Marinas have your support for, for for the whole campaign? Yeah, I mean, he he he, he has definitely had have, have our support. I think football is very black and white, uh, and people tend to. I think one of football's biggest problems is that uh, uh, you make decisions on uh, on uh, temporary uh, variation in results. Uh, and the short-termism is, 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 is causing a lot of bad decisions and we want to look at our performance in a, in a, in a wider perspective and we want to look beyond what's obvious if you won or if you lost and uh, we felt that's, that's very important when you've got to measure the, the impact that a, a head coach or a manager will have. And in your talks with, with the owner Matthew Denham, obviously after such a successful first season in, in the championship, what is your understanding of his target for next season? Is, is it promotion? Is it at least being in the playoffs again? We, we, it would be stupid not to try and do better than last season and uh, and doing better than last season is, is, is being in the in the race for promotion again. So we, we definitely think that's uh, possible, but in football it's a, it's a random game, there, there are no guarantees, but uh, we, we aim high and uh, we will not, if we fail this year, we will aim high next year, but uh, it's a club with big ambitions and, and obviously we, we want to do better than last season. Thank you. No, I was just going to ask, because the, the, the previous system, the way things were working, um, coming up from League One into the Championship, doing well in the League Championship, the championship a lot of the fans will look at that and say, that was working really well, why change it now? Yeah, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of sayings in football. Why would you ever change a winning team? Why would you ever fix something that's that's not broken? 
So we think it's important all the time to try and improve things. And that also sometimes involves changing things that seems to be working. And uh, that's very much uh, Matthews and, and Brentford's philosophy. Rasmus, what was it about Marinus that impressed you? Why, why was he your choice? We wanted a coach that were open-minded, who uh, had shown that uh, he could create results by thinking differently. Because Brentford is not a football club that's got to win by spending more money than the competition. We, we need to win by, by outthinking the competition. And uh, we, when we met Mar Marinus, we, we felt that uh, he, he's an innovative, open-minded person, uh, who at the same time, um, at the same time he embraces the, 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 the club's methods and the club's ideas. He also brought uh, his own ideas to the table, uh, which we can learn a lot from as well. So, um, so we think he was a, he was a great, great uh, character in terms of combining the openness to new thinking with, with having some experience and having shown that he can, he can, he can create results. What he did, the, the job he did in Excelsior was magnificent, and uh, and we think that uh, giving him the opportunity here, he will be able to do uh, really, really well. How much work do you think needs to, to be done? I mean, it's a question for both of you, really. But on the squad, how much, how many players need to be brought in? Which areas need to be strengthened? I mean, first of all, as Mario says himself. Uh, the current players, they've done a great job last season. They need to have the chance to, to impress Mariners and, and uh, show that they can, they can take to the, club, the club to the next level. Uh, at the same time, we are aware that Championship is a, is a big league with lots of games, 46 games. Uh, and uh, as, as Phil and I mentioned in a, in a, in a previous interview last, last week, uh, we probably need to have a, a bigger squad to be less vulnerable to, to injuries. Um, so there are some there are some work to be done in terms of um, new players, and we are in that process at the moment. And Marius, you, you'd like to do that work early before pre-season. Would you like to get your squad together as, as quickly as possible? Uh, yes or no? Because it's, it's difficult now to to get the full squad ready or for now. We come in uh, one of July and maybe surprise the uh, players me. So uh, I mean, I'm now say that you have to leave, or they said they have to leave. Uh, I think that's not not a good judge. Just uh, see what happens and then uh, maybe uh, uh, this, uh, in July or August uh, need for other players. Then then we look for that. Well, what do you think of the differences between obviously your experience of coaching in, in, in Dutch football and coaching in the championship, do you think that the style of football, the, the type of football that are different? Yeah, maybe I uh, 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 give a uh, uh, leap to, to, to the team. I want to be uh, sometimes a bit between the players, uh, talk with them, uh, give, uh, give feedback, but also give feedback to me. Sometimes above as well as I'm not here and the players there, so maybe it's new for them, I don't know. But I want to be uh, uh, open-minded in that and close to my players, give uh, a lot of attention. Yeah, I think uh, the football uh, in, in the Netherlands is maybe more uh, tactical uh, in other ways. So that's, I hope I, I, we can find a mix from English football and a little bit of Dutch football. And then we make, can we make the difference like that? Has it always been an intention to coach in England? Uh, I, I was uh, 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 last winter uh, with a friend uh, on holiday and he said, what do you want then in the future? I said, um, I haven't think about it uh, yet, but as I mentioned uh, at that moment, uh, yeah, I want to be go to England. But, uh, but at home, uh, we haven't uh, discussed about it. We are talking about uh, maybe when uh, the other club uh, from the Netherlands come, uh, what, what we do. And I, will, I live in the middle, so I, I said I, I can drive. And then suddenly uh, Brentford uh, calls me, so it was a big uh, discussion at home uh, because we are surprised uh, with it. Uh, that's that's uh, uh, a, a tough discussion because uh, I'm I'm going all out. Uh, my family, I have uh, two daughters, five and eleven, and the wife uh, stay and they come uh, over seven times. But that was the hard uh, discussion for the owners. They understand the opportunity, but I'm uh, not not very happy. Do you have any football contacts over here? Maybe Dutch players, Dutch managers, or whatever you could speak to and say, you know, what's it like coaching in England? I've uh, call, uh, called uh, Erwin, Erwin Kummer. Uh, uh, my assistant, Roy Hendricks, uh, was uh, his assistant at XA, but, and he was a head coach. And I was there several times uh, 
train the, the strikers, so I have called him and he, uh, how it was to, to England. Uh, he was very positive. So, uh, yeah, the, that's the only, uh, I don't know Kuma, Ronald Koeman or uh, Fogal, but uh, yeah, I, I know a little bit Aaron Koeman.